So bear with me, there will be some technical uh, knowledge sharing and that is the purpose of FTTH, share technical knowledge. So I will try to keep it very simple and if I fail, I apologize in advance. So let's go ahead. So in my presentation, I'll talk a very little about 5G, how it works and what are the technology, core technology behind 5G. We'll then move on to the 5G enable IT applications that is very, very uh, close to our campaign, close to our, very, very close to our ICT ministers campaign. And then we're going to go to 5G network architecture. This is important to know so we can understand the challenges, which takes to our next topic. And then uh, we're going to, so, sorry, I'll figure this out. for smart cities, 5G network architecture, we'll then move to challenges of 5G deployments, how to overcome them, and I can guarantee it's different for different. 5G, it's a, it's a fifth generation, GSL4 generation of technologies. We, we can all remember when 1G came, 2G came, 3G, 4G, and 5G. So, to, so that I give everyone a bit of background of the technology that we involved while telephone system, which was an analog system. And like it looks, it was very strong and it was very solid. And many times called it the brick. 1991, we have GSM, where we could not only talk using our mobile phone, we could send some text. 2001, 3G came along. It let us access to the emails and it also gave us enough ability, just enough to have experience how the future would look like. A bit of glance of data. 2010, 4G came. We had an experience where we can do computer like work using our mobile phones. I'm really glad that 2020, every 10 years, is the transition. It's a pattern that's been there for a long time. And we are here, and thanks to FTTH again, 2020 is gonna be the biggest year for 5G. This is where people talk about 5G, people talk about the challenges, they decide how they're gonna work it out, how they're gonna implement it. And it's not gonna be easy, I can promise you that. So 5G. What capability 5G gives? We saw 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. So for 5G, first of all, it gives us data rate, which is 20, 10 to 20 gigabits per second. This is readily available online. Then it gives you a connection density. We talked about IoT, and later in the presentations, there's a lot of presentation about IoT applications. So all that IoT enable services require lots and lots of devices. And we're talking about a million devices within a, within a kilometer of square. To give you a bit of idea, if I go back to my childhood, I used to get use my uncle's mobile phone easier today. I didn't want one back then. So 
and we was really, really excited about it. Oh, it's a mobile phone. And that's pretty much the only device we had at home, which is trust me. If you go back to your home now, it has Wi-Fi. Your five-year-old child have a Wi-Fi connected smartwatch. So in 2020 onwards, it's only going to increase, and it's a very steep curve. So that will bring to one million devices in within a kilometer of area. Next would be the latency and mobility. The basic fundamental concept of mobile is about mobility. And also how quick we can get access to the movie. Before you get into planes, we can play in the plane. Or we want to download a game for our weekend. So 5G will give us five milliseconds end to end from internet access all the way to our mobile. And uh, one millisecond over air, so from the base station to your device. Higher availability by design. When you give something to someone to use, like a car, like mobile phone, it becomes part of their day to day life. And then you can't up, take that away. They just want it to be available more and more. By 5G, by design, is a higher availability technology. And very last is the proper utilization of coverage. We uh, quite, quite often, and I come from Australia, we're a big country. There's no way it's possible to cover the entire country. I love camping. When I go to the camping, cell age, guess what? I have good bars, good sauna, which is to do the interference, come make calls. So <clears throat> it comes down to the quality of service settings of the base station. So 5G forces the operator to offer you quality of service. So all the camping noise you get in the middle of busy time, bad coverage, that something can be resolved on 5G. How this capability works in the radio environment? We really spend more than 20, 30 years on the technologies. So my next slide is about 5G technologies. 5G uses many, many technologies, but there's six key technologies that's going to really shape 5G network and architecture. So I'm going to quickly, quickly take you through it, purely because that will make sense to my next message that I want to give it to you in terms of the 5G architectures and its applications. So why 5G is so exciting? What is, such, what is the elements of 5G that really enables us to do what we want to do and we are banking on? So number one is a millimeter wave. And later on we'll go through one by one what they mean in a very short form. Second is massive model. Number three is uh, small cell, and number four is beam forming, number five is NOMA. NOMA means octagonal, non-octagonal multiple axis. So bear with me, I'll take you through that very quick. It's very technical, so I don't want to uh, bore you with that one. That is something sits within the core network and it's an application level, so not very relevant to the topic in hand today. And then it's MEC, which is called Mobile Age Computing. So let's find out what they are, what they are made of, and why they are making 5G so special. So, millimeter wave. In our traditional system, all the phones, all the applications that we're currently using, that sits within this area, which is one to ten And uh, really, that's very common. Because as we're going from mobile phone to smartwatch to iPad and the laptop, a typical person have four to six devices. And that frequency and the pipes that we're getting is getting really, really cramped. So what can we do about it? So ITU standard release 15 says 24 gigahertz onwards is the less used spectrum. And that's proposed for 5G. What it does is, the smaller the frequency is, the less thing you can feed into it. 
how it travels really far. The bigger the frequency is, the more data you can fit into it. And uh, it doesn't travel very far. So let's take us to the next topic, which is the massive minor. And that was the enabler of 4G. We give someone a data connection. That slowly ran up. Could be because of capacity, could be because of the data demand they have. Then they said, I want another link. So you introduce MIMO. So 5G, together with MIMO technologies, is going to be enabling us the data speed of 10, 20 gig that we want to set up for our network. How does MIMO work? It's a very simple concept in the area. You have one antenna giving you a dedicated link, a dedicated RF hub, you can call it a connection. You increase the antenna, your radio part increases. That means with an averaging and your mobile phone having multiple antennas, allowing you to get a higher data speed. It's not something new, it's already used in the service for a long time. So when you have all these data centers, and we only had one gig speed in fiber, we connected 10 fibers. We exactly did the same thing over a radio layer. What is next is small cell. I would like to refer to my previous topic where I said the bigger the frequency is, the more thing you can feed into it. But then again, the frequency travel doesn't travel very far. So that's when you need a lot of sites. And that's going to be one of the challenges of deploying part in your architecture, in your network, in your city. How does it work? So on the top right hand corner, there's a small city. I always like to use this, even in Barcelona 2017, I use this one. So a part of me is two years old, two, three years old. So <clears throat> all the red crosses mean that if we connect millimeter wave, which is from 26 or 25 gigahertz all the way to 300, to our existing tower, would it be really 5G? Unfortunately not. The black cross shows that your user will have block traffic. The millimeter wave, which is used by the higher frequency range, easily get blocked by the building and the trees. So what we we'll need really, what is the efficiency of small cell? So we'll need a city, of course, in the same city, and we'll have lots and lots of small cells. And on the top right hand corner, orange dotted line shows that's the part that the user is going to get through small cell. And this is how they get served. However, the challenge still lies that there's lots and lots of them. So then it comes to the informal. Yes, we have lots and lots of cells, but capacity is still a concern. That takes us to the next technology being formed. What is being formed? Our traditional system is a traditional network deployment for operators is a three-sector mobile phone system that gives you an omni pattern out of the tower cover. And that's how they look like. So each color represents an antenna. However, you are sharing the capacity of the antenna among the people within the coverage area. So what is so special about being formed? Sorry, I give it away. Okay, so it needs to be like this. Cool. <laughs> so that's the beamforming where using smart algorithm you get focus beam dedicated to individual people, individual users. This is done using the return path of your signal and the energy that your device is dissipating. Then our next is NOMA. I'm not going to spend more time in it. This is really 
do with the uh, history, do with the data packaging, how the data packaging done at the core level, send it to your mobile. But I'll quickly take you through it, which is not orthogonal mobile access. What it really means is, on the left hand side is your 4G packaging, the orthogonal pattern, and on the right hand side is your NOMA, where you can see within the same block, you can fit in multiple different packages. This is one of the reasons, key reason, that 5G is much, much more efficient. And if you compare that, that you're handling 1 million devices in the kilometer of areas, that's what you need. That takes us to the very last technology that 5G is going to use, which is mobile age computer. And I'll take you back to our original core architecture where we have an internet connection, we do our data network, which is all our servers, applications, everything. This is carried all the way up to 4G. And then we have our fiber and radio network, which is our traditional architecture, our base, and that's us. However, what is mobile edge computing? It's a bit like this, where your internet connections, your applications move in front of your fiber and your RAM, or at the same places. In a very simple form, if someone is downloading the movie, which is very, very popular, 100 times, then the system 5G system store it right at the edge. So next time someone is downloading, it's a demand and supply. So it makes it faster, quicker. Lots of processing, which needs to happen all the way at the end, and happen after the fiber work in your core. It's now being pushed right at the edge at your base station level. That's how the technology processes. So it does the thing that needs to be done quickly, faster, at the edge of the network, and the rest can stay at the core. So that's how we achieve the five millisecond latency in 5G. And the, really the key thing is that mobile edge computing functionality that allow us to enable our, our access our data very quickly, faster, quicker. And it also gives us application level split. I will not bore you anymore. That's the last slide of 5G and what's about 5G. So we'll move on to what we're going to do with all these capabilities and the functionalities we have. It's really useless if we can't implement it. <coughs> Looks good on paper. So I will go to, I'll try my best. So I I really miss my country. I did, this is purely my research base. So some data may be 99% accurate, maybe not. So just excuse me if it's not the most recent data. So again, what we have achieved in 5G? We got 10 gigabit plus data, which will give us really, really good broadband access. We'll have very, very strong connections with lots and lots of devices, million plus in a kilometer. And we'll also have very low latency network. What can we do with it in Bangladesh? So the key requirements for a smart city alliance with Digital Bangladesh campaign. And we all know about the key initiatives. One of them is the launch of digital centers using government and post offices where we will use, for sure, the band, broadband network we need. Imagine you walking into a post office, and while you are walk, walking in there, you already enter your address, you know how many letters you need to post, you go there, scan a barcode, it gives you the sticker, you put it in, no queue, nothing. You can do it at 2 a.m. at night, you can do it at 12, PM during the noon. No change, no human involved. Of 
obviously the requires, which will require a government data communication network. So the government will need to have regulated network. It's not common, it's not something that we're doing first, it's being done other part of the world. And it has to be cyber security built in. And then there's a digital connectivity, which is our next application to reduce traffic conditions on the road. Every 5G presentation I have seen till date, they all have that. We have it, we have it a real problem. But traffic consciousness is our problem, or the people that move around with it. That is something we need to think about. Because it may not be the solution for just the traffic if we just camp on one traffic. Because it's actually really the people who is going trying to go from A to B. So we need to do something about it. For that, we really need IoT enable optimized traffic system. So we can analyze the sensor to tell us how many people is going from Gulshan to the airport, how many people is going from Mirpur to the international airport, and which time of the year is the peak, or which day, which hour of the day is the peak. That gives us to do a better traffic planning. And also, it will give us innovation that we need for today's transport, more so for tomorrow's transport solutions. Next application could be a smart metro rail system. Again, it's very close to my heart, and that's will, that will be the basis of our 5G network presentation today, which will require automated high-performance signaling system. Around the world, people are deploying CBTC, which is a communication-based train control system. What is communication? It needs a telecommunication network to enable the train movement quicker, faster, without any human interactions. There is different level of CBTC, starting from automated train system to driverless trains, which is implemented in Sydney, actually. For that, we'll need a telecommunication network. With the signaling system complementary, is the TCMS, which is the Train Control and Management System. There is a slide, which will come later on. You'll see how the ecosystem, I would like to call it, of the train network works, and where 5G fits in. Oh, again, not sure. All right, cool. So then again, we would need uh, effortless public services by digital means. This means different to different city. For Bangladesh, the possibilities are really, really uh, limitless. And there is presentation on that, so I'm not going to take the thunder away. So uh, in terms of the management, traffic management security systems, you can say facial recognition, which will help the law enforcement agencies to do things faster, quicker. What I understand from a project that happened in Bangladesh and it's going to be in the next slide is by just enabling CCTV and uh, automated number plate systems, they have reduced the crime significantly. So, is, uh, so above all these results will be, you know, result into efficient and better common um, capital funds. So we as a country, we don't call ourselves poor, but we have limited funds. And we need to use it very efficiently. A good network will let us do that. Uh, smart cities of the world. Uh, I will go through this really, really quickly. So it's the Westminster, city of Westminster in London, one of the first cities used as a trial. Then Cardiff from Waltz, uh, Wellington City in New Zealand implemented a smart traffic system, Hamilton City in New Zealand implemented the same, and smart green systems, Canberra, Australia, they have started. Smart city is a journey. No one can wake up one day or do 10 projects and say, by the way, our city is a smart city. So it's a journey, it's an engagement that everyone needs to you know, participate. And that's the beauty of it. <coughs> City of Adelaide, Australia, and Digital City, Select, I have a question mark. They have 
implemented the very first, based on my knowledge, the Bang Bengali number plate recognition system and this TV camera with facial recognition. So you can see how close we are to smart cities. We already started the journey. But could it be the very first smart city in Bangladesh? What we need to do for that? It's coming in more and slots. So in order to really talk about and deep dive on what is the 5G architecture and challenge in deployment, we need to know about the system architecture, how it works. What are the elements of the 5G systems? Really, it's very simple. So it has a user profile, which is our mobile phone, or an IoT device, or someone in a bus trying to you know, navigate through the traffic. And then we have our new generation radio access network, where you have a combination of small cell and lots and lots of base stations. Um, you have 5G core network, which is mainly enabled by fiber. You have heard Rusafi and uh, our organizer's speech on that. And then our data network, which could be a single data network used by multiple people. So now, if we break it a little bit further and see how the elements look, we'll have mobile phones, our existing tower with lots of small cells, our mobile age computing, which is done at the tower level, Fiber network. Without fiber, we cannot enable 5G. And our traditional core network, which are already on and operating with a connection to the internet. What are the challenges for the point? This is where 5G breaks every single time. 2019, people tried. This is where it breaks. I was on a dinner last night and someone was saying BTRC and honorable BTRC members are here, they want the gear spectrum, but operator doesn't want to buy it. So how 5G going to happen? So um, I was thinking about it last night, I said, that's so true. And I couldn't sleep until I changed my slides. So this is why I'm here for, so I must give some solution for it. So. What are the challenges of 5G deployment? We'll have spectrum challenges. BTRC is doing a very, very good job. I've been following BTRC for the last three years. The amount of work they have done and the, the last five-day journey they have done, I'm truly, truly amazed. And thank you for your good work. Network deployment, that is number of sites. As I mentioned earlier slides, there's only lots and lots of small cell slides. And then strategy. Our even organizer touched on it. Strategy is very, very important. It has to be real life use cases. It has to be based on real life use cases. You need to understand what are the use cases, what strategy I need to put in place. Think in advance, and 2020 is the year, as you saw earlier, and then develop your business model. So the other thing is device innovation, and this is limitless. Once you have the network, the application that's going to come out of it is going to blow everyone's mind away. People is going to use 5G network to avoid having a trip to the doctors. People will use 5G network to prepare a meal before they come home in the evening. So the possibility for innovation and technology demands is going to increase significantly. However, we have to have the network first. Then uh, is the architectural and network deployment cost. 5G needs a lots and lots of fiber. That means lots and lots of trenching and lots and lots of cable underground. And has to be reliably done following the industry best practice. So the cost when you do things right is not cheap. 
then there is billing and operational complexity. We've got really first internet connections. It's working really well. How do you bill our customer? It's too fast. Too many data is going across. We cannot put a limit on uplink, downlink. How are we going to charge it? It's going to be a real challenge. And that's where the strategy comes into play based on use case. Last but the least, cyber security. In the 2G, one, two, three, four, we had what we had. It worked. It took us where it is, but the journey beyond, we are a bit more personal. A smartwatch in your wrist tells someone about your heartbeat, pulse, and everything. That's very personal. So you want to protect that data. And that's where the cyber security element comes in. That was a small example, by the way. It goes much, much beyond that. Because if you're looking at 5G applications in your government space, for your government agencies, you have to do cyber security by design. There's no other alternative. So, strategy role of the government. Now, I don't want to attack on the government. I never do that. I have no intent on that. I personally think they're doing quite well in terms of how they have approached this. They call it digital. However, really, it aligns with the citizens' better life in mind. The metro system, when I first heard about it, I was so excited. Uh, I told my mom, I must come. I should come back home. She says, see how it goes. <laughs> so that's where strategy role of the governments is very, very key in 5G role. So to overcome 5G role challenges, government plays a significant role. And uh, they are, in my view, is, first is, develops city and district specific telecommunication strategy. That is so key. With PPP model in mind, now for most of you know about PPP, but people who are not fully aware, it's private-public partnership. That takes back to my earlier comment. We cannot do 5G alone. We need everyone to contribute and do their part. There's a really good example about in Japan, and I'll quickly Say when the nuclear plant in Japan was, uh, um, you know, uh, it was compromised, and uh, people were suffering. People used their mobile phone device and the sensor to advise the government that what is the level of radiation in the cities. You see how people playing their role. Here. The government has not done anything. They just open a server where people are enabling the government, giving the data so the government can react and put the funding they have, different dynamics. So the telecommunication strategy has to be city specific. Because the projects in every state and every district are different as well. Next we have to do is build a government owned neutral host 5G enabled telecommunication network. Why it has to be going on? Because earlier we find out the 5G gives us 20 gigs of data. Does the operator really need that? Does the user demand that? So how do we use it efficiently? By having a government or, or network, the beauty of it is, at present we have police have their own network. We have Fire brigades have their own network. We have ambulance, they have their own network. And we have military, have their own network. Integrated agency have their own network. Government funding is getting split. But if you go really, you find out that one tower, I was being a consultant on an intelligence agency, and one tower used by government phone, Roby, intelligence agency, police, but the funding comes through different channels. Is it really the efficient way of spending government money? Or why you did that? Now, they're not at fault here. The reason is 
they did never had a technology that can handle the amount of or the demand or the ability to process digital voice call and data transfer by police, fire brigade, including NC and the telecommunications telco operators. But 5G, no limits. So it allows us to do that. So now we have to do things differently. My dad, who used to work in the military, and he told me once that, Arif, if you ever want to achieve something that you have never achieved, you have to do something that you have never done. And now is the time for us to think about outside the box and say, okay, what we have done in the past, based on the technologies that we have, and what we can do now. Imagine the extra money that can be saved by one network and put into good use for the development work. We always have found something to develop on in our country. Next one is higher quality SMEs. I was in Barcelona in 2019 and I met uh, the Google's CEO, Sundar Pichai, and he said, there's too many Google experts these days. So you apply, you put a job, people Google it, they come and they say, yeah, you know what, I know how to do it. Because it's really, when you're playing with government money, your decision impacts hundreds of thousands of people. I really believe we should be cautious on what you think. Accountability is high. Otherwise, how do you sleep at night? So you really need the quality SMEs who have knowledge about telco who have knowledge about rail systems, who have knowledge about city transformation, to build your strategy. So they look at the current network, but it's just district specific. And hopefully good results will come out of it. Then major capital projects. The government needs to hold major capital projects more responsible. The projects that has money, that just go and beat things and get their job done. The next guy comes, we have to wait 10 years to put something in. So by having an overall telecommunication strategies for the government, it will make the projects more accountable. It will force them to do things the right way. It will force them to collaborate with people who need the access to the country or to run the fiber, even if they're not in the major stakeholders. which will avoid costly reward. And also, not to mention the inconvenience of people who wants to just go out of their home and go to work and come back, you know, without spending four hours in the market. <coughs> Enable PPP, define SLAs. So if we do a neutral host network, how does the PPP work? And this is where the experts come to play, and they'll say, okay, let's talk to the requirement for Police, let's talk to the requirement for fire brigades. Understand the commonality and who has the major service SLAs. SLAs stand for service level agreements. That means if you get an internet connection in your home and you don't get it one day of the month, which is down. Mine was down yesterday and I suffered. But so that means the SLA is due with the availability of your services that you're purchasing. And it can be, there can be a common SLA. It's not very hard. The reason is you find police, you talk to fire brigade. One of them will have a higher SLA than others. So adopt that, and the other will be automatically benefited. Okay, sorry. Still getting used to the pointers. Okay, the last one. Provide financial incentive. This is, I believe, our government is already doing, but it, we need to get better at this if we want to give 5G a reality. The infrastructure cost for 5G and the fiber backbone owners and the telecommunication operators, they will be the major player in the 5G rollout, which is, uh, which is going to be, in the next slide, more clear. So how does a 5G neutral host network architecture look like? We looked at the 5G architecture. We're going to now look at how the neutral host architecture looks like. So this is us using our phone. 
of the VM user try to access the network. So it's a radio access network with mobile edge computing. And then it will go to our fiber network, which is the key for enabling 5G, and then our core network. So that's pretty much the 5G architecture. But how can we increase the use of it? That's how. By having all this ability of 10 gigabits per second, 20 gigabits per second, higher availability, the low latency, we can now service multiple government agencies and users under the same network. How do we keep them separate? Because that's a concern. 5G also have a magic in the box, which is called network slicing. PDU stands for Packet Data Unit. So the link that you get from your mobile tower, it's a packet session. Underneath, within the packet session, there is multiple sessions, which is QoS, quality of service driven. So if someone wants really good data throughput, they are on a different QoS flow than someone who just wants to pay their water bill. Or the water meter, or the electrical meter that's sending data to the server can only be enabled at night time when no one is using that network. What it really means is your network now have multiple pipe within one network. Your data is safe, your quality of service is achieved, your SLAs are achieved, happy days. How do we make 5G happen? And what is the role? in building smart cities. The capital projects are the one, they have the funding guaranteed and they they make it work, correct? Because their project define the success of Dhaka. Imagine if Metro project fails. Imagine if the project that I'm working on, Metro Town project fails. That project is supposed to be the transition of Melbourne Metro. So it's, it's not a good look. So we have to hold the big projects more accountable. So be open, so the project has to be open to financial gain. So the moment PPP will come, telco operator will come, ISP will come and they'll say, okay, you know, we want to build this network together because we all get benefited from it. How do we do it? The metro project in Bangladesh, they have to give a bit away. It's always hard. You give a kid a toy and they take it away, they don't really like it. But we are not kid anymore. So we have to do, kind of do things differently, do things more efficiently, and you know, make our city a better city. Then align rail system network delivery plan. So Dhaka Metro has a delivery plan. They have to align the delivery plan with the government telecommunication strategy if once it's created. It can be done both in parallel. It's a bit complicated contractually, but it can be done. I I have executed contracts where some contract is given to a party to deploy and then we came in and we have done a variation to that. Still better to do purely because if you put it very simply, the street you live in, you don't want it to be changed every month, every you know, every month of the year. You want it to be coordinated. And you're happy to wait for the you know the coordination to come back. Then uh, participate in the development, developing the requirements. Neutral host key thing is to develop requirements. So everyone chip in that I need this much data right, I need this much latency for my network to operate. And then they develop a master requirement template which goes into the strategy. Then open to working with private telecommunication service provider. Rail. We like to do our job, but we think we are very exclusive. What it really means is, rail doesn't want to share their responsibility funding or infrastructure with others. And uh, I don't blame them. Previously, they only had four different technologies, but now we have a better technology which we can share. At the end of the day, we are sharing our homes in Airbnb. 
We're sharing our cars. It's only now. So um, smart rail systems with duplicate infrastructure. So this is, uh, I put this in especially because to give everyone a good idea of how the rail ecosystem works. On the left hand side, you have operations. On the top right, you have safety, security. On the bottom, you have passenger experience. And if you look closely into the network part, there is GSM network, there is LT network, and there is, uh, you know, other uh, communication network. All of these can be replaced with the right steps from the government using one 5G network. And if someone told you otherwise, Rusaf, you have my email address. <laughs> so, uh, I'll quickly move on to the next one. So, how do we do that? Okay, what role the Dhaka Metro project can play? Earlier I mentioned about CBTC system. This is a very oversimplification version of CBTC. And someone signaling, saw me putting this in front of you. Audience like that, they probably kill me. But it is a pride. So it is a very basic. There is a train system that uses a communication system kind to a data system that manages the train movement. So what it really happens is there is that's what we need to do. We change. This is a system that Dhaka Metro is with, is going to deploy. So whether we talk to them. We explain them, government take initiative, and we transfer the Wi Fi site, Wi Fi network, which only Dhaka Metro can use, no one else, to a network that everyone else can use. So, what role the Metro project can play? They can, let, they can actively participate in the delivery of the government. They're, the MTCL is a government organization, so it's not very far from the chest. And participate in the neutral host 5G network. Apologies for the flickering, you know, technology is good, but when they not work, they make save notes. Uh, open to the commercial benefits and savings of the opportunity. So they might save money. They might, with, with the fiber owners who have owns the backbone, the ISPs, and the telco, working with them, they might save money. They already use the services. I know that the MTCL uses, you know, grabbing for services, for sale. So it's no different. It's just doing it right way. Then we have uh, when it works. Uh, I think all right. Uh, we really look at the contract. So the contract that was given, we need to see what needs to be done to that one. I'll take you through the speech. And also, currently, uh, the contract that's going to be awarded. How are we going to manage that? Because this is where things will fall apart. How we manage the contract and how we sort of look after the existing contract. I really wish you could have seen the last slide because that was actually a really good one, but uh, we have to go with what we got. So possibly uh, expedite the delivery of metro system. So imagine metro is trying to, DMPCL is trying to build their own network and the carriers and the fiber owner like Fiber Performance Summit, they comes in and they say, you know what? We already have some cables in place. Let's look at your plan. Let's work together. Or we can hire, give you high availability services. And, you know, let's for a change think about the things a bit better. And that's where the project, the MPCL, has to be open to the idea of, you know, all coming. And then uh, put commuters' experience before the commercial goals. So the contractor in the MPCL, they really need to put their uh, commercial head aside and say, let's do something good for the city. And you know what? The relationship will pay off over the years. So the very last one is, is the slide where I had all the details of the DMPCL project, which is, you can't see, unfortunately. So it's where the MPCL is going to have uh, antenna sites every 300 meters to run the signaling system. If we transfer them to 5G network, 
you'll see that we already have a workable solution to enable IT and smart city for Dhaka. Thank you again, and sorry for the IT.